get that off. All right, that last segment of the night. I think this was a three-parter also, but we'll get through this quickly. Yeah, and I think so. we are. I have we will. Yeah, I do have a bonus question intentionally though because I think it's a good wrap-up question. We are starting with Harmony Ginger. Harmony, how do you think TSR influenced the broader table? Oh, this is a gimme question again. The broader tabletop RPG culture and what lasting effects do you see today? How do I think TSR influenced the gaming culture? That is such a hard question because, like, it's th there's so many answers. Pretty much developed it, didn't it? Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think that's a fairly self-evident question, but what are the lasting cultural impact, impacts? So I think that um, unfortunately they didn't influence it enough because I think a lot of the original spirit of the game they created has been sort of decayed and diluted with um, whatever we have now. Um, however, I, they, they obviously created an entire genre. Mm -hmm. um, an entire type of gaming. Is, is that even called a genre? An entire system, I guess, maybe a better word. But um, they created an entire type of gaming. Uh, there, there would be none of what we see now without TSR. I mean, we wouldn't even have these, uh, the, the, the theater kids story gamers playing a cafe and prom simulator, if not for TSR. They'd probably call it something different, but maybe we would. Um, oh, I, I think Bear's giving me a look. Oh, they're still talking while I'm ahead. <laughs> it's still, it's, no, it's still, it's still your turn. He can come in when it's the open panel or his okay, turn. Can you, can you tell him to um, look that way? Bear, don't be mean. Like, don't give the evil eye to Harmony yeah. Ginger, please. I, I mean, I get it. You're both trying to steal each other's souls, being Irish or whatever yeah. the hell you are. We don't here. have souls, you yeah. moron. That's why you're trying to steal each other's. I would like to play no my No dad stare. X card. <laughs> no. So I... I it's just such an odd question just because they obviously have influenced the hobby so much. Um, even the parts that are unlike anything they did, even like I said, the, the prom and coffee shop story gamers, we wouldn't even have those without TSR. Mm -hmm. um, it, they've influenced. I, I, do you want me to give something specific? How about Dungeons and Dragons? Um, is that specific enough? <laughs> like, no, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, to be fair, it's, in a way, it's kind of an easy question because, yes, it, it's, 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 it's a culture where it started. Yeah. Uh, but, and I don't know if this, is, I, I'm going to ask this in the hopes that it does, but if it doesn't affect you, no, no problem. Uh, can you describe a memorable moment or convention experience from the TSR era games that highlights the community spirit of this time? Now, my understanding is you're in with the BroSR, and I think that would be a perfect example of, uh, of something really old school that highlights the spirit of the game or potentially I highlights. I haven't played D&D &D with the BroSR. Okay. It, people people say I'm like in the Bro SR, but I'm really not. No, they don't. No. They don't. I've, I've only played Traveler with them, and that was like once. Okay. Um, I, I'm the, I don't really play with them. Um, really, my um, I, the, the only person in recent history who has run a TSR game for me is um, the Dungeon Delver Bill, who is not a bro. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, a recent moment that highlights the community spirit. Um, well. In his game, I got eaten by a toad, so... Um, well, it's good to see guess, you made it out alive somehow. Yeah, yeah, it highlighted the community spirit because I fed the toad. But this is a non-answer. This is really late for me. I'm like... <laughs> no, 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 you're, you're fine. And, and we only got a couple of questions left, but how about this? I mean, you run... <laughs> Uh, with yes. some old school mentality, even though yes. you might be running five year or whatever, I think that also helps highlight the the community spirit. I guess you'd say. I mean, you reaction roles. We know that's come up yeah. in the past on Twitter. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, the random tables. We're gonna have one with the uh, basic yeah, expert so soon on on uh, what. Uh, um, so I, I don't know what you mean by highlights the community spirit. I guess I'm having trouble with that part of the question. But okay. I mean, I run I run 5e in Shadow Dark right now. But um, I... I I, I'm very confused on what you're asking. Yeah, I, I don't want to put an answer in your head, okay. so I think I'm going to leave it at that, uh, just in case I ask one of these these guys. And that's a completely fair answer that you gave there, because if the question is too vague or not pointing in a direction, I just don't want to give you the answer okay. as far as uh, um, dictate what you say. So, I, I have had playing 
TSR D and D that highlights the community spirit. What is community spirit? What does that mean? <laughs> I, I'd community say this dies and then comes back from the dead as a spirit. <laughs> well, oh I, yeah, I, I, no, that happened though. <laughs> yeah. What? No, like um, when I got eaten by the toad, um, I like came back to life in town, and I don't really know how. I think that was like the community raised me as a spirit. <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go on to Malik. I'll, I'll probably come back and address this a, a, a little later. Like I said, I just don't want to throw an answer in your head. I want you to say what you feel and what you believe, and you're doing that, so it's all good. Malachi, okay. how do you think TSR influenced the broader tabletop RPG culture, and what lasting effects do you see today? Well, I mean, we all know, we all call it, the Indies a 800-pound gorilla in the room. It is yeah. the gateway to the hobby. If you want to, you're most likely going to play D&D &D before you play anything else. And this is something I've actually noticed in recent years. I feel that D&D &D actually created its own genre of fantasy by melding all these different influences in the Appendix N together. Lord of the Rings meets Appendix N? No, Lord of the Rings is Appendix N, but what's the magic like in Lord of the Rings and D&D? It's different. <laughs> um, actually. <laughs> wow, Malachi. No, but they, the, the magic in D&D is taken from Jack Vance. You got you know, the elves and the dwarves from Tolkien. You have that, you know, the, some of the Conan in there, too. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's, I think it's its own genre of fantasy now. Okay. Uh, there was one specifically I wanted to ask you. Uh -oh. Okay. How did TSR's handling of Dungeons and Dragons community differ from Watsi's and what impact did this have on your involvement in the community? What was oh, TSR known for? What was the acronym they were given? They sue regularly. Yeah. The online discourse was, uh, was could be bad with when TSR was still running D&D with all the lawsuits they were doing. Whereas I think Watsy really embraced that early on. You know, they had forums for the longest time. You know, they wanted the community to talk. They had the OGL. They wanted the community to come together. I think Watsy was more supportive of that compared to what TSR was doing there at the end. Would you say it's still that like that now? No. I think you have third edition rose colored glasses on, sir. There was that point. It was um, after Saga edition, after they lost the Star Wars license, and that, you know, Watsi started shutting down the forums. You know, they didn't have forums for the longest time until they bought D&D &D Beyond. And now it's kind of like you're at the point where you, they kind of want to shut out voices. They're like, hey, you know, we really like this old stuff. We want to see some of this old stuff over here in the new stuff, you know, let's get the stuff from more than adventures. Let's bring this over to the new stuff. And they don't want to because, Oh no, you heard somebody's fifis. Okay. Uh, is, is everybody just getting tired? What's going on? It sounds like we're just turning into like, you know, let's all watch Fox news and get angry. <laughs> I, I, I'll have some commentary towards the end here. No, it, it is. We are actually past time, but, We'll 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 get through this. Uh, uh, so Watsi did a lot of good community early on when they first got TSR, but then they blew it over the last, especially the last decade. I think. Sure, I think it was just the last like four or five years is where they really started to blow it. But yeah, I think well, no, I think the. Before you before we go before we go into this deeper conversation, let's okay. let Bear answer, and then because I got to ask him the question, then then we can do uh, all the communication back and forth here. So, Bear, how do you think TSR influenced the broader tabletop RPG culture, and what lasting effects do you see today? Um, well, it created the hobby, it promoted the hobby, it produced the hobby, that then in turn created the larger companies that were doing stuff as well. And what is the lasting influence of today? OSR. That is the lasting influence beyond just the concept of the hobby itself. 
the the so the rose colored glasses for third edition. Well, there's also rose colored glasses for the TSR times as well, right? So uh, that's what we're dealing with. It, it's that's the whole thing. Do you think that um, part of that, and I can put myself in this, obviously. Uh, part of that culture, that community, is what causes, say, what I would think was mostly fun back in the day, but now much more serious in terms of things like addition wars and gaming purity. Well, on one side or the other, as you know, I'm a TSR fan. It can only be this way, otherwise it's all wrong. Or TSR was wrong, and then I'm glad Watsy fixed everything that TSR did bad and kind of build these tribes, so to speak, in terms of the the. How much of your audience do you want me to alienate in my answer, man? I, I want you to be honest. So if it alienates all of them, then it alienates all, all of them. Right. Sorry, everybody. I look forward to your unsubs from my channel. Uh, we have to remember Remember what it was like role-playing in the 80s. Do you remember the, the, the level of social grace at least 50% of the players brought to the table and social awareness and hygiene and things like that? Well, I work... I work okay, where I work... I often have to talk to IT people. And you know what I say when I'm done talking to IT people? Man, they're really good with computers. Humans, not so much. <laughs> You're right. You know what I mean? And that's the that's the that's one of the lasting legacies. This addition war stuff, this, this, you know, I'm right, you're wrong, you're an idiot, blah, 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 is a holdover of the antisocial nerd misfit culture that D&D was core to back in our day. The more modern kids, I find, are a little more tolerant of option, opposing ideas. They don't get as defensive. They can, and I've seen it happen, but a little bit less so. I don't see too many videos from, like, XP to level 3 or Runehammer or whoever going, 15 reasons why the OSR sucks and old d d is garbage. Like, I don't see that from them. I don't see them attacking the past as much as I see the past attacking the present which is an unfortunate holdover. What I do see, though, is Watsi dividing the communities every time they do a sensitivity reading or they put a disclaimer. Or, you know, the old opinion ideas were different than the one. Fuck off. Pardon but that's why mind. you don't need XP to level three to do that because the company itself is doing it and you need the people. Right. right. But what I'm saying is, is that I don't notice the people drinking the Kool-Aid and becoming, you know, cavaliers for this new ideology they just tend to want to play the game and have fun mm -hmm. and i think we need more of that you know how anti-tribalism i am you mm -hmm. know how much i'm like just fun. play the game everybody mm -hmm. have a good time and stop telling people they're wrong because they don't agree with you and now my voice is gone i will end my rant okay uh Har harmony you and malachi you guys wanted to continue the back and forth a little bit from earlier go ahead and no, I want to talk to Bear. That was a really huh. good answer. And I yeah. think you hit on oh, something you. like uh, very uh, salient right now is um, is there are a lot of people in the OSR community um, who thrive on negativity and who react to what see. And that's all they want to do is react to what see. And I'm not naming any names. That's not important. It's not important who these people are. But um, reacting to what see is not building a community. Yeah. Um, you have to be building something positive. Um, and if, yeah, I, I think that was an incredibly good point and uh, very well said. Thank um, you. Yeah. And I don't think you alienated nearly as many people as you think you did. Yeah, you know. Well, a year, and like half, a year and a half, two years ago, he would have alienated my entire audience because this, this channel was built at that point on ranting a lot about Watsi. But it gets tiring, it gets old, mm -hmm. and there's only so much you can say before you're just saying it again and it's time to move on. Harmony, when I used to come on his show, I used to say, thank you for having me on Fox RPG. <laughs> you know, Bear reminded me of a story. I uh -oh. heard of, yeah, a uh, guy was running a second edition game. His wife's in the game. She wants to play a tiefling. So he's in the Facebook group of Tui, and he asks, how do I do it? Nobody wanted to help him. Nobody wanted to offer suggestions. Everybody just told him he's wrong, he's stupid, don't do it. Yeah. Good. Yes, that's the right answer. <laughs> Jesus, Max. But it's his table. He wasn't... Good, then figure it out at your own damn table. You're the game master. Be smart enough to figure it out or don't do it. My rant is over now. 
I'm trying to get some energy built back up. Sorry. That was a bad one. No, it's not. Uh, no, playing no. against type or trying to be some wackadoodle nonsense that you're not supposed to. It's half demon. It should be killed on sight. It's that simple. I've actually, oh man, <laughs> I shouldn't say this. You're going to throw me off the show. Um, I roll my race randomly every time I play. I use a reincarnation table that's weighted towards human usually, depending on the setting. So I always roll my race randomly um, based on whatever the demographics of the setting are. Well, that's cool. We do that for Earth, don't you? I'm playing in a game soon that hasn't started yet. And I rolled a tiefling. And I'm so scared because I've never played one. I've always avoided them because I thought they were dumb. But I'm going to play one now. My only issue, to be completely honest with Tieflings, is this. is It's just like the Warlock thing we were talking about before. It's a half-demon creature from uh, from uh, the Outer Plains. And if you're walking around something noticeable, like ram horns or a tail or something, when you walk into a village, outside of Forgotten Realms anyway, you should be considered an omen, a curse. People should be looking at you cross-eyed. You have just caused all the plants not to grow, even though you just walked into town and this, has been, this famine's been going on for two years. Whatever. If that's not happening, then what's the point? It's a human in skin suit. Outside of that, if you're playing with those those things that you were talking about before, like that whole cool thing about the warlock, I 100% agree, have it. But you can't have the bonuses. You can't have the cool factor without having the negative side of it as well. Or it's just not another species. It's it's just a human wearing a costume. Very goo. Yeah. Sorry, that had nothing to do with community, but... We brought up teeth Well, no, it, it, it kind of did because the community, uh, a lot of community back then, especially when you go back to race as class, don't even like the fact that you can be a dwarven cleric. This is one of the things I was going to say earlier, but I think Adventure Conquer King, because it's something Bear said earlier, um, about those races should be limited, but they should have classes that are tailored to what those races are known for doing. And I think Adventure Conquer King is almost perfect when it comes to that. It's like, well, if you want to do something specific, like you, you, you play the right race for that role. Humans can do everything. I, I hope I'm making sense now. Apparently, I'm getting tired. Um, but uh, but if you want to be some sort of elven ranger type, you can do that. If you want to be some sort of elven fighter mage, this basically a spell uh, um, spell singer, you can do that. But you're going to be limited to those things that are still part of that trope. Uh. Yeah, but a nerd's nerd. The thing is, is people didn't play on it. They hand waved it, just like they did with the um, the warlock thing. Oh, we're not going to get into the, the nasty side of being a warlock. That that's just yeah. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to have you out there, you know, enslaving kids or or you know, drinking the blood of virgins or something like that. When wait a second, what kind of evil god are you following? You should be doing something that's inherently evil. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. I mean, I honestly, I hope you have fun with it, but I hope you have fun with it within the spirit. But this comes down to the community where the modern community doesn't want to deal with that. They want to deal with all these things as being, oh, it's my own personal background. Yeah. And, and I think that's a community change. Yeah, I'll try to. I It, it is. And um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. It's late. Please stop okay. going. Well, should we move on to the next question, guys? Or is there anything else you guys want to follow up with there? Because I, I said some things. If you want to respond to it, else we can move on. I think the next question will tie a little bit more together when we can bring Wasi into the conversation. So, Fair enough. Okay, let me read some chat here. We have a uh, friend. I used to think Dragonlance was the prime setting for D&D. &D. You know, in the old days, it was Greyhawk, and then it became um, Forgotten Realms. Yeah. Oh, I, I actually think third edition was Eberron, wasn't it? Wasn't that the official no, setting? Third, or was edition, it? third edition was official. Was Greyhawk? Wasn't was it? Was it Greyhawk still? Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Now I personally believe it is Forgotten Realms. Yeah, Five E is openly Forgotten Realms because it is the most homogenized setting. I think. Uh, once back to 2E. Huh? Well, Two E was still Greyhawk as the official setting. Once Hasbro bought Watsi, the corporate pandering to social uh, movements infected the game and divided the community. I agree. Thank you for the five dollars. That might it might be a Hasbro thing. I don't know, I thought I thought Hasbro bought it earlier than that, but I I might be wrong. And then Van sells everything over in Rumble says Watsi blew it when they can uh, canceled Alternative and dumped the OGL on the market. 
<laughs> on a business side, I can't agree with them, but on a hobby side, I agree with them, if that makes sense. So, okay, let's move on to what would normally be the last question, but it's going to be the second to last question here, and it looks like I'm starting with Malachi. Okay. How do you think... Oh, hold on. Yeah, that's it. Uh, how do you think WotC has influenced the broader tabletop RPG culture, and what lasting effects do you see today? Um, I think Bear nailed it with the dividing in the community earlier. I think that's a big one, because they're, like... One thing I've always heard was there's a difference between the shop community and the online community of 5e. I ran a game, a 5e game at my local ga friendly local gaming store. My players are rather normal people. There wasn't any of this like BS you get online. And I see them constantly listening to the online voices rather than the game store voices. Which I think are the ones that they need to listen to. If they want to keep the game growing. Um, oh, shit. There's something else I wanted to mention. I can't. I, it slipped my mind. <laughs> it seems to be happening to everybody right now. Yeah. Uh, how about this? Because you kind of started this one. You opened this can of worms. I'll do it. Can you describe a memorable event or convention experience from WotC era that highlights the community spirit of the WotC time? And we're talking about community and culture type stuff still. So, I think for me it was um, when I ran my 5e game, uh, I had one guy that he'd been playing for a while, back to 3e. And he was the, one of the older players. We had a couple of younger guys that were just gotten into the hobby with 5e. And his whole goal was, I'm going to teach these guys the, you know, the right way to play. Before, you know, before back at least to 3e, you know, the working together as a team, you know, don't do anything stupid, that kind of stuff, getting their, uh, teaching them their, the basic core concepts of what traditionally was in D&D &D about the teamwork aspect, at least. Okay. We'll bounce up to Bear. Yeah. Bear, how do you think WotC has influenced the broader tabletop RPG culture and what lasting effects do you see today? Well, I mean, look, we go for the easy, low-hanging fruit. We've got game balance. We've got uh, diversity is king. We've got uh, everything goes. We've got build over, over character. We've got uh, endless amounts of, of world building that just doesn't make you be creative anymore, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But what I can say, and I said it earlier in the conversation, is with third edition, they revived D and D. They cast Raised Dead on D and D in the community, and as a result, there are a lot of companies out there today that we might like product from, say Pinnacle, for example, or some others who are as big as they are now, or the Troll Lords, or whomever, because of that third edition OGL D and D revival. They were able to build companies, and then were smart enough to pivot away from D twenty before the D20 glut and collapse happened. So WotC left a lot of room for self-publishing. They left a lot of room for new ideas. And they kind of revived the role-playing community in a big way. So in your opinion, how have WotC's efforts towards... And I want to I want to have an honest conversation about this, not the typical rant stuff. But uh, how have WotC's efforts towards inclusivity and diversity in Dungeons & Dragons influenced your gaming group or play style? How does... Wait, 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 wait. Say that again, please. So how have Watsi's efforts towards inclusivity and diversity in Dungeons & Dragons influenced your gaming group or play style? Even if you decided to go, no, screw you, I'm going to go 180 degrees against what they're saying, it's still an influence. Sure. Um, it brought a lot more women into the, into the hobby. You think that was Watsi, not Vampire? I, I, think, I think in the new generation that are there now, Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition brought a lot more women into the hobby. Vampire did it for us in Gen X and the early Millennials, but for the late Millennials and the Zoomers, Watsi 100% is the one bringing them in. And, you know, God bless them for doing it, because I think the more voices we have in the hobby, the more we're going to improve the community. We just got to watch out for the idiot, you know, marxist type people that come in and just want to you know you're wrong here's right do as i say but those people are temporary they don't stick around anyway 
Okay. I know you don't agree with me. It's okay. You're allowed to. I I partially agree, but uh, we can okay. talk about that later. Uh, Harmony, same question for you. How do you think Watsi's influenced the broader tabletop RPG culture and what lasting effects do you see today? I think the pivot from TSR to WotC is when the game became more of a, less of a world centric game and more of a player or party centric game. Um, I think that was already in that was already happening, but I think uh, WotC sort of cemented it as a game that is based on your party or your character and not necessarily on the world itself and your influence emphasis on the world. Uh, and I think that that lent the game into becoming a lot more of a uh, theater kid style game in a lot of groups, which did, yes, bring in more women into the hobby. You had the rise of uh, Critical Role um, and a bunch of other that followed in their footsteps that um, some of them sponsored by WotC themselves. So I think that is a huge influence on the type of player that comes into the hobby and the type of player that comes in the hobby makes the hobby what it is. Like, I mean, yeah, it's uh pivoting to, um, we, I think we've dunked on like monster prom and, uh, <laughs> monster coffee shops like 20 times this stream, but I'm going to do it again. Uh, that, that comes from the influence of the theater kids coming into the hobby and wanting to LARP that stuff. Um, which is the, type of player that Watsi cultivates. Now, um, the other thing that uh, Bear hit on that I kind of want to reiterate is the OGL. I think this was something that they did that was actually quite good for their game. Arguably bad for tabletop RPGs as a whole, um, but it was good for the system they ran, and it was because there was no money really to be made in system supplements, so they released the OGL and said, all right, Y'all do it. And uh, it worked out very well for them. That is actually one thing that I think D&D has on other role-playing games now is the amount of third-party licensed supplements that you can just pick up. Um, that's the amount of third-party support for D&D is just off the charts compared to any other game. Um, it's just how it is. And that's because of the OGL. Now, like I said, it's arguably bad for uh, the hobby as a whole because those um, because that energy could have been poured into other systems, but it wasn't because of the OGL. So um, I would say that those things are basically uh, Watsi's broader influence is uh, cultivating players that come from critical role like things and the OGL, which allow broad third party support. Okay. I, I think that's where I stand on that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to see if we can either start a debate or agree. We're going to find out right now. You said the theater yeah. kid thing. Now, if Crafty is here, he'd be lighting up my chat right now, but he's selling a car because I right. I, <laughs> I, I come from uh, an era where we were dirty campaigners. I am very much pro Hickman Revolution style gaming. I think it is the appropriate and best evolution of the hobby to happen. That doesn't mean what came before it is bad. It just simply means that the hobby has moved on. And we were considered the theater kids, probably because five of the eight or nine of us were actually, I wasn't, but you know, we're in theater. I was the weird outcast that played football. But You know what? Okay, go ahead. I, I, I'm sorry, I thought you were done. The, the, re the reason why I'm saying this is because I put a lot of emphasis on role-playing, which is why some of the people who very much are in the LARP sphere or role-playing at the table sphere, uh, not so much game, I confuse them because I still believe it's a game where I look at a lot of the older players, I'm like, it's more than just a game where we sit there, chew potato chips, say, move my pog over that way. No, you should be actually acting out your character. I will stand by that. Not that you have to do it that way, but that is kind of the right, the, the, the evolution or what role playing really, really is. So when you were saying like the whole theater kid, I actually can empathize with a lot of the people in the 5E sphere when it comes to the theater kid mentality. The problem for me is that those folks also want to eschew all the rules. They want to say there shouldn't be rules, that there shouldn't be limitations. There should be. I should just do what's in my imagination. And that's what's right. And that's where I disagree with them. Go ahead. 
May I clarify my comments then? Sure. Because I actually, I use theater kid as both a term of endearment and a pejorative at different times um, because I actually love theater kids. Um, I don't love when theater kids want to make it an improv acting scenario instead of a game. Like How about when both? It, it can be both. It can be both. That's great. But, um, and you know, one of my favorite groups is full of theater kids. I actually, I love them. I think they're great. But at the same time, sometimes it like loses the gamification. And I, I and I'm That's a game true. nerd. I like the gamification um, when it's to the exclusion of gamification uh, of the game rules. Then I have problems with them. So I think conceptually we agree. Now there might be some nuances in there where we might, but I think conceptually we agree. But Bear looks like you wanted to jump in. Yeah, no, I just wanted to clarify earlier when I gave you the face, uh, Harmony. It's because you conflated in your statement, probably not on purpose, dirty, filthy story gamers with theater kids. And there is a division between the two because gamers still exist at the end of the dirty, filthy story gamers, right? We still play the game. And I do agree with you. Like, theater kids can be wonderful and they can really bring something to the game, but they do tend to want to just turn it into a massive game of theater sports. Or improv, yeah. Not as much fun. Yeah. Like I said, I like story gamers. I uh, I use the terms interchangeably and just expect people to know when I'm using it as a term of endearment. And I'm sure no, 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 I totally. But I mean, that was why I was giving you the stink face as, as comedy. You know, it was just like, don't call yeah. me a theater kid. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Completely. Like, as I've said so many damn times on these streams, I will let anyone be at my table. And Max disagrees with me on this one. And I mean, I have had games where one person is, oh, I go to the dwarf bartender and ask him, uh, are there any rumors he's heard? Versus the guy who's like, I, good barkeep, I wish to know if there is anything. And I have them both in the same game, and I'm fine with that. Because as long as everybody's having a good time, they're playing the game, we're having fun, that's what matters to me. Not necessarily what matters to Max, apparently, because he says, no, that guy who's not role-playing is doing it wrong. Okay, fair enough. But I just, I'm not... So, like, earlier someone made a comment uh, about, well, we'll come up in the Super Chat, but always allowing someone at their table. Yeah, mine too. Back in the 80s, we were playing with women. You know what I mean? There were women at our games, and in the 90s, and there were people who... Mm -hmm. But this is a Canadian thing. And I've yeah, noticed I that these war stories, a lot of what I experienced in, in Soviet Kanukistan versus the American tables was a very different beast overall. Uh, and that's okay. Now, some people shared the same experience, but it seems a lot more didn't. And I don't know why that is. Maybe it's a cultural thing. Maybe it's a... Half I don't of know. my group, and we've talked about this before, but half yeah. of my group in high school were women. Yeah. I, like, and I'm talking of the core group. We actually had a bigger group than that, which included, I don't know what the percentage were, but included a few more women, a lot more men. But uh, the table that I sat at most of the time in my high school group back in the late 80s, early 90s, were, were women. One was a cheerleader, one was a was an actual drama queen, and one ended up going to prison. Uh, so, you know, again, different. And she was the ginger. Oh. Just but uh, uh, but but so, yeah, I mean, I think people's experiences are are different in that regard. But to be fair, we were the theater kids when it came to role playing. But we also made sure the dice dictated what happened. This is why I think Malachi years ago is the one that forced me to start saying this term. Maybe it was somebody else. But emergent storytelling, the dice create the story. You try to do the action, the dice create the outcome. Why I don't mind looking up charts? Why I don't mind dice in the game? You can't slow the game down with an issue because it is still a game. But I still want to be there and be in the headspace of my character and act as my character like I guess the theater kid would be if that makes sense. Yeah, my 3E party was a third women. It was a third what? Women. Oh, a third women. Okay, yeah. I have a friend for a group that was almost entirely women. There was like one guy in the group and they yeah. they, they were a good group. I, I really liked them. It was just getting if you wanted anything significant to happen in game, it was just like the wrong table i just i remember playing in ravenloft with them and they're like we want to spend half the session role play braiding each other's hair today and that's oh, not God. exactly oh, mine were not like that now i ran a game that was all women 
and some of them were new to D and D, and a mm-hmm. couple of veterans. And I'm telling you, the darkest, most evil shit I have ever seen told by players <laughs> was in that game, including the gnomish girl who was royalty for her clan, who in the Underdark volunteered to sell her people into slavery to free the sorceress who was being held in the the the, the city skull port or whatever. And I and we all just were like, what the hell? Like I mean, she was legit like, but well, they're my people, they'll do what I want, you know. It was like, oh my god. So I don't think that I, I think there's a real misconception of of the entire concept of gender and of gender of players and what happens mm-hmm. in games and stuff like that. I think it's all personality. Yeah. And I think some people are going to want to sit around and braid each other's hair all session, and some people are going to sell their people into slavery. And you just roll with it and <laughs> see where the guys take you, man. Yeah. I braided your hair so you looked so you were worth more at the slave market. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no. Great in different play styles can collide like that to make something beautiful. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, this was one of my players, but this wasn't in my game. This was in an, in an L5R game she was in. She burned down a village. I don't think that's a common it, trope. <laughs> and I We've don't think it was the only one, if I remember right. It was a common thing to burn down villages for her to do that. Yeah, well, some players just like to burn down villages. My face to face group here, they often all describe a nice village to them. And now the joke is, it sounds lovely. I can't wait to see it glowing in the red embers of <laughs> night because they will invariably burn the village down. All right, let's uh, let's read some uh, some comments here, and then we've got the last and most important question of the night. Uh, let's go back here. That was uh, so. I think we're starting here. Uh, demons are introduced to be monsters, not reskinned human player characters. Play how you want, but I don't see reskinning everything as human as flavorful or interesting. Hundred percent agree, TD. Yeah. yeah, I can see that. And and that that's the issue I have with a lot of people. Like, why can't I be a good orc? Because you're an orc, they, they, like like they the, have work. Uh, the great Yakubian says, "Did you give the panelists ketamine?" I think we all took a little bit of ketamine for a moment there, but uh, you know, we livened it back up. I I got some energy, some emotion back up. I'm sure I'll get a couple of hate comments for that, but that's fine. I don't care. Uh, you know what? Uh, it's this is also partially an entertainment medium, so. Uh, but I think the panel has been. Uh, absolutely on yeah not every question was answered you know with full knowledge bear had i think one or two uh, uh, harmony said one or two whatever there's no issues with that because the perspectives are what matters no um Raphael says at the same time i could say the more voices we have in the hobby the more bland and homogenous has become i agree with that statement 100 percent too and this is probably where bear and i disagree i don't think that more voices are better i think more voices drown out the people who really understand what i don't say is supposed to be going on but understand what the hobby is and i'm not saying i'm the arbiter but there are people out there who understand uh what okay maybe maybe the, the hobby is a bad word because the hobby is diverse but what a particular game is whether it's a, it's a palladium game or dungeons and dragons or vampire or whatever the games have been mentioned today um that there is, yeah, I mean, Bear said it. I do believe there is a right way to play and there is a wrong way to play. Uh, at your table, do what you want. It's okay to play wrong. We actually have a video on that as well in the members-only section. It's okay to play wrong. Just recognize that you're playing wrong. I play almost all my games wrong. Yeah, I could say, like, uh, it's having more voices is good to get more ideas, to get, you know, for to learn how other people run their tables what they create and stuff but when everything is like everybody else's table then you get the bland part uh lord Mattia says watsi did nothing i've always allowed anyone and everyone at my table they created the illusion of us versus them to make dollars and i somewhat agree with that because back when we had the whole addition war thing it was mostly in good fun I, I, i'm going to be a broken record if i go through the whole litany i won't but it was mostly in good fun yeah we poke jabs at each other but that's like people who poke jabs at people who watch baseball versus basketball or football you know we we poke jabs at each other who you know the wrestling fans you like that fighter and i like this other fighter you know mma whatever we poke jabs at each other but you know we sit down and enjoy the blood sport that is gaming in the end i think some of that has changed recently but it was it was mostly in good nature thoughts well you 
split two things that we didn't ask for our thoughts on the one about the more voices making it bland. Oh, I disagree. I, I fully disagree on that statement. Uh, I don't think more voices makes anything bland. I think it brings different perspectives and different ideas. Not all the voices are good. Mm -hmm. Not all the voices are going to be uh, worthwhile and they're not going to contribute great things, but there are those who will. And those little nuggets of light and spice will make the menu much more interesting. I'm from Minnesota. I like my food bland. Yeah, that hey. explains everything. <laughs> Hot dish is everything. It's all hot, hot dish. dish. Don't boom. call it casserole. There's no such thing as casserole. It's hot dish, you weirdos. <laughs> and the last guy. What's that? Uh, yeah, the what? division The division in the community of like, um, like what Lord Mat Mateus? Lord Mateus was saying. Mateus. Um, I'm sorry. I don't know how to say his name. I've never heard it said. Um, Malachi's just in this weird correcting mood tonight. God damn. I'm What's glad up? to say it right. All right, Lord <laughs> Mattias was saying that like they create divisions here when people kind of always let whoever the hobby. I'll say I've never sat at a table that didn't allow women. Does that add anything? No. Um, but I've also not really been turned away from a table for anything like that. In fact, um, men much older than me and the hobby are always happy to have a woman a woman at the table. Like they're usually like tripping over each other to teach me their rules and stuff like that. I mean, it's never been a problem, except people are going to point out that um, I did have Jeff Rowe on my channel say, no, you can't play with us. And I was like, well, I want to play with you anyway. And then like a couple months later, he was like, you want to play Traveler with us? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, obviously it's, it's good to have both the sexes at the table uh, to play for different perspectives. Also, uh, I forgot what I was going to say with that now. Dang it. There was something else I was going to... Right. No, 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 no. It was your time to talk. I, I should have wrote it down. I forgot what it was. Oh, th this idea... Oh, yeah, this idea of gatekeeping. Like, oh, it's a bunch of old white men that were gatekeeping people. I'm sure there are horror stories out there of actual yeah. people being douche nozzles like that. Don't get me wrong. But there are nobody that I knew. None of us. Now, our high school, junior high days, I mean, you got hormones and you got kids going through puberty, yada, yada. That's a little bit different story. But uh, from the time I joined the Air Force and beyond, we would have welcomed it and we wouldn't have had any issues. The only way we gate kept at my tables... And this includes where I played and where I ran was, yes, we did have an expectation of style of role play, but we didn't do it like demand and kick out. We just like hey, we encouraged people to role play the way that we did. And I've talked about that story a bunch of times as well, so I won't waste everybody's time on that. But yeah, so we did put some limits on there like this. These are expectations at the table. And then don't be a douche nozzle. Mm -hmm. Don't try to disrupt the game. Don't mess with each other. You know, have this thing called, oh, what's that word? Oh, decorum. And treat each other with, with general respect at the table and move on. Yeah. Yeah. The the whole thing, my own, the only way you're going to get gate kept from my table is if you're a jerk. I mean, simple. Otherwise, I don't care who you, you, you are. <laughs> what? That's like. Uh, I missed that. I'm sorry. Based on giving me an AI generated backstory, <laughs> that can get kept. I'm sorry. Go on. No, you're good. Uh, let me. I just <laughs> yeah, want to give you a uh, ten page backstory for your characters. I mean, I'm going to read it. Yeah, fair. I just, you know, say if you give me an AI backstory, you just you 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 get get kept. Well, Patty, that's such a mean thing to say right in my own chat. <laughs> No, that's cool. Uh, and the last comment, Lord Matty says, uh, I've been trying to get into one of Bear's games to braid his hair. <laughs> oh. Come biking up my beard, bitch. Do you like <laughs> wait, wait. I have a question for Bear and Malachi. This is so off topic. I'm so sorry because we're over and we're asking an off topic question. Anyway, do you guys like play characters with hair? Yeah. 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 Okay. Sometimes I play characters who are bald. Well, no, I always play. I always play ginger characters. Like no matter oh, I what. Don't, well, oh, yeah. I don't want to see myself in the game. I've never had that disease of wanting to see myself in. The no, game. I, I totally. I, I have. I have well, that disease pretty hard. I'm like, yeah, yeah whatever I mean, it is, red. Depending, like some video games, I'll put myself in mm -hmm. there, but it's something like a racing game. 
Yeah, I mean, even if it's like, I don't know, a gnome, it's going to be a ginger. Cause it's like, it has to have a little bit of me in it. I'm sorry, we can go on. I want to see if I can uh, brush off my Russian that I took m many years ago. Minya Nravyatsya pod... Oh my god, I can't even read the damn thing. Pod ziem... Pod ziem yelia? Yeah. This day! Polnia Drakonov... Hiroshi Drug, something about good friend at the end. <laughs> yep, um, I, I, it's been many, many years since I lived in and spoke Russian, so uh, I don't remember what that is. But if you want to translate that for uh, for me, go ahead, because I'm not Google translating that right now, because I have one final question to do so we can finally release Harmony Ginger from uh, <laughs> from her prison cell and let her go to bed. Very good story. Um, All right, go on. All right, we're going to start with Bear. We're going to go around the circle here, so... A uh, couple things. Uh, doo -doo -doo. When you answer the question here, please shout yourself out one more time. You know I'm not doing that, but let's go for it. Yeah, well, shout out simple. heroic then. I don't care. Shout out something. Pretend like you care about what you create. All right. So, Bear, starting with you. All of this said and done. Mm -hmm. And sure, we could have asked 100 more questions. I really didn't want to do an us versus them, but I kind of knew it was going to happen anyway, especially with me on the panel. It happened. In your opinion... Which company, TSR or WotC, has had a greater impact on the legacy and the future of Dungeons and & Dragons, and why? Of only Dungeons & Dragons? Yes. Well, of only uh, Dungeons & Dragons? The legacy and future of Dungeons uh, & Dragons. Yeah. TSR. Because okay. they built the house, they laid the foundation, they did all the work, and they created the playpen that WotC moved into. Uh, so I would say for sure that role playing Watsi because of the OGL and the self publishing movement that it spawned that it's created so many damn games now. Uh, as for my stuff, Heroic is uh, the superhero game. It's a neo clone of the old Marvel superheroes game. If you join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash Zenith Comics, uh, five bucks a month, you'll not only get uh, 10 characters a week you can use in Heroic Games when I update the Heroic production document. It always gets shared with the patrons. So you'll have the most up-to-date version of the game rules before we publish as well, uh, as well as adventures, rules, ideas, setting lore, things like that. It's five bucks. And yes, I use AI art for that because it's not meant for sale. It's meant for just pathfinding and doing stuff. And that $5 goes into a pool where I pay the real artists who are doing the art for the actual published book. So as one person said, well, I'm not supporting your AI art. I only support real artists. I was giggling because I'm like, well, you just took $5 away from a real artist by having your little childish outburst <laughs> about virtue signaling. Um, but ultimately, uh, I believe in role-playing games. I believe in having a good time. And I believe that as long as you're not being a complete schmuck, everyone's welcome at the table. Okay. Harmony, same thing for you. Please, uh, whatever you want to shout out, go ahead and do that. Um, and here, your question is the same as Bears, obviously. Uh, in your opinion, which company, TSR or WotC, has had a greater impact on the legacy and future of Dungeons and & Dragons and why? Right. Uh, you can follow me on YouTube at, at Harmony underscore Ginger or on X at Ginger Blast. Anyway, I got nothing I'm selling. I just like to talk <laughs> about games. Um, not, not to... That sounded like mean. I didn't mean that to be mean there. <laughs> right? um, anyway, as far as who has more influence on the legacy of the hobby, I would definitely say TSR because everything came from them. Um, they, I mean, I don't, I don't, I, I feel like I wasn't alive in the eighties and I wasn't in tune with this in the nineties. I was too young, but I have heard it was a cultural phenomenon. I know my mother knew more about it than I did. I know because when I was a kid, I, I all, all I knew about Dungeons and Dragons was that I wasn't allowed to touch it. But <laughs> so, I mean, it, it had to be big if my mom knew about it because she didn't pay attention to anything. But anyway, that was such a dumb answer. I'm sorry. Uh, as far as the future of the hobby, that one's harder. Um, and I don't, want to say that WotC has more influence on the future of the hobby, but I do think that um, going from the going from the emphasis on the world to the emphasis on the party or player, I think is the biggest shift in the tone of the game. And I do think in the future of the hobby, 
And when I say the hobby, I do not actually mean TTRPGs in general. I mean Dungeons and Dragons. I think the future of the hobby is divided between those who are playing Watsi's version of the game, which will be monster proms and um, elven coffee shops. And uh, I, I, that's like the 10th time. I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're fine. And, like, and, and, you know, tieflings dancing in the forest of forgotten realms or whatever. <laughs> uh, that's going to be the future of uh, the Dungeons and Dragons hobby by Watsi, I think. That is that is where it's going. It is going can, to be can more. I, can I push a back just a little yeah. bit? I just want to kind of yeah. challenge the logic for just a second here. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, I want and, 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 and it's a real simple question. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Wouldn't you say that because of all those changes and that we're not going back, that actually Watsi is going to have a greater impact on the legacy of D and D? That that is what that was what the conclusion of that was. That's where I was going with that, actually. Okay. So Fair yes, um, I think that because the hobby is divided so much between players who have been coming in in droves, preferring that style of game, thinking that D and D is more of a theater experience because of what C that's where the majority is going to end up. Now, if that is the future, then yeah, I think what C has the greater influence. However, I do think that there is a growing pushback with the, uh, the OSR, the bro SR, uh, the whole classic gaming group here. I think there is a big pushback to that. I think there are lots of things that are being published in pushback to that. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say I think that TSR, that, that WotC has the greater influence in the future of Dungeons and Dragons, but TSR has the greater influence in the future of the hobby in general. Interesting. Okay. That's, that's my answer to that. Oh, cool. I, I, I like that perspective. I like listen, my concern was like I'm just I'm scared that the that the TSR legacy is at some point gonna just be washed away as just kind of a, a memory for a, just a niche crowd of people who just want to remember their twenties when they're eighty years old, you know. As yes, but as um as Watsi is being more I hate using the word woke on your channel, but I'm going to use it as they're getting woke or as they're uh, dividing the community more. There's a bigger pushback The the OSR, the, uh, the, the old school gamers, those people are growing. Um, they're the OSR, the bro SR, that's the Twitter groups, but like the community of people that prefer retro clones or that prefer old school games in general, like, uh, the old games that is growing right now. That's not shrinking. Okay. Excellent. And you can say, woke all you want to hear. We try not to be political anymore, but we're definitely on, on. So I push back against that. Uh, the woke stuff. I don't care who you are, what you do in life, who you vote for. None of that matters. Uh, my only target of derision are the people who are the woke crowd. Everybody else, you know, you're welcome to be weird if you want to be, but if you're woke, you're my enemy. So, uh, Malachi, uh, finally, we're gonna we're gonna end with you. All right. In in Let's... your opinion, which comp? I gotta ask it again, though. Yeah. Remember this is for the for the audience. In your opinion, which company, TSR or Watsi, has had a greater impact on the legacy and future of Dungeons and Dragons, and why? Okay, show first. If you want to follow me yep. on Twitter, it's right there. Catch my milk toast takes and my occasional retweets if you want to check out my sub stack he's got in the description below i will say this for the legacy of the hobby itself and the future of the hobby that is in each an individual gamer and table whether you want to play an old school edition you want to play a retro clone a neo clone that is up to you as for the legacy of D D. The company that has had the most impact is Wizards of the Coast. They have recently, and this is right now, they have taken the corpses of the creators and the people involved with TSR, dug them up, dragged their good names through the mud, and threw them under a bus. And it's gone from the from TSR. I mean, from Wizards of the Coast, from their books, it's gone out into the people who are the historians of the hobby. That's how the infection has gone. Wizards does not 
care about the legacy of the game, only what they are creating. And that is my problem with the the we'll call it the homogenization or the overabundance of people in the hobby is they don't care about their traditions. That's the only thing I've ever asked. No. When we bring new people into the hobby. When we bring new people to the table, respect the tropes, respect the traditions, respect what it is that we do and stop looking at it all like it's bad, wrong, and, and inappropriate or whatever term you want to use. Respect what came before you and then I don't care what you do. You can say what you want about something, but when you're going to say a person was this, that, or the other thing because of this game that they created, and they are dead and in the ground and cannot defend themselves, you you are scum in my opinion. If you're going to go after somebody, go after somebody who can defend themselves. And you have the option. There are people alive that you can talk to when these books are being written that you ignore because you do not care about what has come before. You only care about what you're pushing. Go ahead. I'm done. No, I just wanted to add to that. Um, I'm going to swear, Max. So anybody who's got any little kitties watching the stream, just but the but the but Fuck Watsy, fuck D and D. Take all that money you're wasting on their bullshit and support indie game creators who are desperate for support and are trying to make games because we love games and we love you. Mm -hmm. They do not. They don't love you. They don't care about you. They just want your fucking money. So stop feeding the beast. Starve it and feed mm -hmm. us because we are busting our asses, working full time jobs and trying to create product for you. Mm -hmm. And that is the only thing I will say about this. Matt, Crafty Matt sent me a message earlier on, on Discord saying, I'm surprised how well behaved you're being. I don't know what he was expecting me to do, but if it was <laughs> fuck D&D, there it is. No, fuck well, D &D. To, to be fair, one of the things about Bear, Bear respects the, the show. If, if uh, you know, when, when I ask people not to cuss as much, he agreed to tone it down. Uh, if, once we I hit really segment did. five, he's probably going to get it all out of him. Oh, so, yeah. uh, but, uh, all right. So with that, we've got their final words. Uh, I'm going to say something that might surprise people. I think in both Legacy and the future, Watsy's got it. I hate to say that. I don't like it. But that's my opinion. Uh, I'm, I'm going to leave it at that because I think Bear had a great mic drop. But uh, my, opinion, <laughs> my opinion is... Uh, is that the the greater impact? If we come back to this in thirty years, the greater impact is going to be Watsi uh, uh, on both aspects. I hope I'm wrong. I hope Harmony is right. I hope that with the classical gaming or, or what are we calling it? I don't know. Everybody has to change terms because people are fighting everybody. I don't care. OSR, uh, uh, retro clones, yada yada. I hope that those things stay alive. And and really keep the inspiration of what was original D and D going while Watsy burns down everything that we loved and appreciated about it for its Watsy fantasy role playing game. Yeah, that's... All right, may, what's, still what's... the greatest single book ever produced for first edition D and D. I'll fight you on that hill. Uh, okay, okay segment five, Malachi. Yeah, I don't care what we do in segment five. Talk about whatever you want. Uh, I got to close out the show here. So before I do that, first of all, Bear. Thank you for being here as always. Malachi, thank you for being here as always. Harmony Ginger, it was great having you on the show. I know a couple times you said you don't think you gave good answers. No, all of your answers were from the perspective that they needed to come from. I appreciate you being on here. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. So I hope you come back for another one. It's on the Discord if you want to fi find a, uh, you know another show that might be of interest for you. But I hope you had a good time as well. Um, we're only <laughs> Hey, we're only 20 minutes late tonight. Uh, what real quickly? What are we talking about? Oh, did I go through chat? Oh crap! I don't think I did. Uh oh. Uh, nerds, nerd says uh, I'm not effing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not an effing chili <laughs> <Not Coast loser. laughs> Harmony Ginger, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. It's gonna uh, be a point of pride for me, and then I'm gonna release something and like forget everything I said. <laughs> If you got something to sell, sell it. Uh, Beat Magnet says too many normies have gotten into D and D now. They watered it down, it, but it, but it's not the normies' fault. It's our fault for not saying no. That's that's all we had to do. When I joined, people said no. 
Why not? Because here's why. And then we either decided at the table to change it or not change it. At my table, I will say no. Or I'll say yes. <laughs> but we don't just say, oh, well, you can do whatever you want. If you can imagine. Remember, imagination can go too far. It's not about what's possible because all things are possible in somebody's imagination. It's about what's plausible and what's probable. Uh, TD says, there's no example of a successful product made for everyone. Hence, we'll always find a plethora of critics. Yeah. Um, the gold standard for product success is providing a specific taste. I agree with that. Go ahead, Malachi. I don't know. The Model T would like to argue with you on that. That was a pretty successful car. And yet it was superseded by all the cars that came out after. And oh. officially, Malachi is no longer in the Codex Albana game because of that <laughs> statement. <laughs> You're up. Okay. And and the last comment we are going to leave for tonight. Again, please everybody in chat, thank the panelists, thank them for being here, uh, especially Harmony because it is her first time. Uh, a lot of good chat, man. You guys kept chat hopping tonight. I really appreciate that. You guys were absolutely fantastic. I'll tell you what's going on next week here in just a moment. Uh, Truffle says, "Why is Dungeons and Dragons a hobby instead of a game?" Uh, I use them differently, so maybe I'm not clear in my language. I'll let these gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, speak you know, for themselves. But uh, when I talk about the hobby, it is the 800-pound gorilla. So in one regard, it is the hobby. When I talk about Dungeons & Dragons, I do mean it as a game. When I talk about the hobby, I mean the entire broad hobby, which includes that big circle of Dungeons & Dragons that's the 800-pound gorilla. So that's my take on it. Do you guys have a different take? Or? I refuse I... to use the term TTRPG. Because we were first fuck computer games. They can call themselves CRPGs like they did in the old days. I say RPGs, and I don't mean rocket-propelled grenades. I will say there's a, a, the hobby, RPGs hobby as a whole, but there's also the D&D hobby. Because there are people that will only ever play D&D. They will not want to branch out. They will just stick with D&D. <laughs> That's a weird take, but okay. I mean, it makes sense. It's, just... no, I, it's why we have homebrewed things like Star Wars for 5e. Why? I'm Fair not going to be pedantic about that. I don't particularly care what word you use to describe it as long as we know what people are talking about. Yeah. When I tell people and they ask what game you play, I say D&D. And then they're like, oh, me too. Then I get pedantic about, well, I actually play, you know, whatever. Because everybody understands what D&D is. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know. Have you heard of D&D? Yes. Well, it's like that, but with superheroes. And they go, yeah. what? And then they want to know more. <laughs> so um, let me put this up here. So I can let people go home and go to bed, whatever. Uh, subscribe. This Sunday on RPG Digest, we'll be continuing on with Twilight 2000, where I will be talking about, uh, we'll be going over the gear, the weapons, vehicles, and gear, and we're going to talk about your home base. And then Heathen Dog is going to cover, finally, finally cover, in a lot of people's opinions here, the Rifts Coalition Manhunters source book. I don't know why it's taken us that long to get to it, but it has, and now he's going to do it and get, bring out your coalition flags because you know <laughs> that's what it's going to be about. Next Friday on the 20th of September on some random RPG live stream. Max, 20th of September's already gone. That's because you're watching it on video. Uh, why should anyone play Rifts? I'm going to allow these weirdos... Oh, Malachi's going to be back next week. Would you stop hogging all the panels, man? Um, Malachi's going to be back next week. Also, Francois de Rocher, who was here last week, and Timothy Frehley, also known as Akito, is going to be here. All Riffs fans. In fact, Francois wrote a Riffs book. Something mm -hmm. about Quebec. It's weird. Um, <laughs> so they're going to be in here. Try to convince me why I should like Riffs. No, it's not about me. But It's, it's going to be, you know, why should anyone play Riffs? You know, some people love it, some people hate it. Well, they're going to try to convince you to play it. So if you enjoy this discussion, please like this video, subscribe to Legion of Myth, and to all of the panelists whose links you can find in the description. And with that, I want to wish every single person a great week.